Mark, good to have you here at Noise11.com. Uh, really looking forward to a couple of things. Uh, later, in a few weeks, uh, we get uh, Billy Joel uh, down in Australia for one night only. But before that, uh, we get you and Billy and the band in cinemas right around the world, which is uh, really exciting stuff. It's brilliant. Uh, I, I got to see the film and to hear it. First and foremost, it's a throwback. It's 32 years now. Uh, my hair was still black then. and uh, it's, uh, But it's, it's amazing to see the energy that was in, in, in the band, Billy's energy, Crystal's energy. Um, it, it's 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 incredible to think to see Billy so taken aback. Uh, first of all, I'm a Yankee fan from forever, and to see him so humbled by the house that Ruth. What the? It's to rock the house that Ruth built is such a great title, and it's exactly what we did. And the thing that stands out in my mind is how when we were there, uh, I had my my arm around. Uh, Babe Ruth's monument with my Jimi Hendrix t-shirt because I'm a big Hendrix fan, obviously. But uh, um, it, it was so, it, it was, it just took me back I, from the time I was about six or seven years old that I first went to Yankee games. Um, being there was just, it just brought us all back. And Billy being from the Bronx, you see this one scene where he's between, uh, I, I believe it's between an Italian restaurant and when he plays Take Me Out to the Ball Game. He just looks up like this. It's like, it's like he's so taken aback by we actually pulled this off. We were the first band ever to perform at Yankee Stadium. And it's a big, big deal. First of all, the video, the, the film itself, uh, Steve Cohen did uh, what he put together uh, is an amazing job. The sound, Brian Ruggles, I mean, the, our eyes and ears, Brian Ruggles, the sound that they did, is it's in, it's in, um, in uh, uh utmost and you literally feel like you're engulfed as if you're on uh in in the audience it's a very special uh special uh film i can't say enough about him it was also my son's sixth birthday so um uh he he announces dario's sixth birthday even though it's dario but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fantastic so uh it, it, it must have been incredible like being on that hallowed turf it's you know coincidental i guess that uh in weeks to come you'll be on australia's hallowed turf the melbourne uh, cricket ground i well. can't i can't wait paul it's it's uh, it's truly like i mentioned it's my favorite place to, to perform, obviously, is Madison Square Garden because I'm home in my own bed at night. But second to that, I love Australia. I absolutely love Australia. I love the, the people. I love the culture. I love, uh, I mentioned, I love Noosa. I love, uh, and we'll be in Melbourne. Melbourne is such a fantastic city. It's so vibrant. And um, I can't wait. I can't wait. I, I can't wait for the seven, uh, the 19 hour flight to be over to tell you the truth, but it's, uh, <laughs> But that's part that comes comes with the turf, right? Well, you get a stop over in New Zealand, so that's not too bad either. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, but <laughs> I didn't mean to make such light of it. There's that, but the point the point being, it's a it's a long haul. But when you get there, I, I, uh, in the past we've spent a couple of weeks there, and it's 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 beautiful. Yeah, I mean you know it. You know how beautiful your country is. I don't I don't have to pat you. That's a I love the great Australian um, uh, expression, but I don't know if I could say it on on, on radio. Uh, it's a, oh, you go for it. I have, I'm, oh, I love, oh, you're great, man. Oh, you're one of, our, one of my best friends. Oh, I'm having a piss in your pocket. I'll see you later, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite expressions of all time because you know exactly what it means. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm having a piss in his pocket and, and you're off with it. But uh, it's a it, it, we can't wait. We really can't wait to get there. <laughs> well, you've had uh, quite a bit of experience with Australia, haven't you? You've had a few Aussies uh, yes. pop up on in concert with you uh, in New York City. Yes, John and... Stevens, for one. Uh, yes, John, John, I love John. Uh, up and I love John. Absolutely adore John. Yeah, he's uh, one of the true, true. Uh, he's got, he really is. Uh, in fact, my dear, one of my dearest friends, uh, Charlie Drayton, played with Cold Chisel for some time. He's now with, with Bob Dylan, but uh, John's John's amazing. 
John, John's a force to be reckoned with, as you as you know. So, <laughs> yes, and, and, uh, and another, about, another one that springs to mind is uh, Brian Johnson, not an Australian, but he fronts uh, an Australian band. Let me tell you, drive. Oh, yeah, <laughs> if you can understand half of them, I love, I adore Brian. I adore him. Uh, one of my favorite talents of all time, and one of my favorite, uh, my wife's favorite, is. Um, well, we call him Diesel, but Mark um, Lazat Mark is, if, I'll tell you what, I I got to sit in with his band for one song. I traveled after a Billy gig, I like an hour to get there for the last song. But I'll do it again a hundred times. He's he's a, an incredible musician. Australia's got so many great, great singers. Jimmy Bonds, you got, you got, it just, it just goes on. Um it must be in the water. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's uh, it's pretty special. Well, did you, did you know? Here's some uh, here's some news for you. Did you know that as of yesterday, it is now Doctor Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy received a doctorate from uh, the University I, of Adelaide. I beg, I beg your pardon, Doctor Barnes. Well, you know, my my dear friend Ringo, he's a doctor and a, and a sir as well. Doctor Doctor Barnes, Doctor Barnes, could you come to the ER, please, Doctor Barnes? <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, what was this? When did this happen, Paul? This happened yesterday. Oh, brilliant. Same day that, that uh, Aaron Judge hit 61 home runs. I don't know if you got that news down there. <laughs> it's, a big de- it's a big deal for us. It's like it's like it's not like cricket where like it's going to go on for, till, till next week. This happened last night. So I'm just kidding about cricket, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's not- go, go back to Billy. I just want to uh, frame uh, the albums uh, that you were on with Billy. Like you, uh, I think the first album would have been Innocent Man, followed by The Bridge. Yes. Yes. The Innocent Man, followed by The Bridge, followed by uh, Kopek, whatever it was that we called that in, in Russia. The Russian. And yeah. uh, yeah, the, 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 tri- the, the, the trip to Russia. Yeah. Those are the three I was on. And then, of course, the Greatest Hits, we did a bunch of stuff. Uh, Stormfront happened while I was out with Hall & Oates. But uh, one of my favorite Billy records would have to be... Um, the nylon curtain because it got it received it didn't receive the accolades of let's say um the stranger or uh the innocent man it was like in between those albums but the songs on there are are epic i mean you have a song like goodnight saigon um where's the orchestra which to me is like one of the greatest pieces of music uh i could listen to that over and over again um allentown uh scandinavian skies it's a. It is. It's one of my favorite. It's. It's. And again, it's one of the one of the ones that don't get the. Uh, it didn't get quite the uh, public accolades, but it's brilliant. I look. I love. I love the innocent man because it's my first chance to to perform and sing and play sax. I got to play the uh, the triangle on innocent man and all these different things, and that band was. Well, that band was the the reason people should go and see. Uh, the movie. The movie brings back it. It, it, it brings back. It, it was a whole different animal. And each of I, I've been with Billy now forty years, and uh, each iteration of of the band. I, I, I pulled out a library card for that word, by the way, Paul. The, each iteration that I've been through has been they're snapshots in my career and in my life. Um, Liberty. Liberty is a, a phenom. Liberty's playing uh, on that uh, on that particular uh, film. Liberty, Skylar Deal, Jeff Jacobs, Crystal was just fresh in the band by about eight months by the time uh, we did that. I think eight or nine months. But um, her energy, Billy's energy, it's it's just incredible uh, to see that now. I keep it, it brings me back to. Um, well, I don't know if you know this, but we just we played uh, the garden about two months ago, and Olivia Rodrigo sat in with us. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah. And she's yeah okay, so she's nineteen, so I'm not going to get the exact numbers right, but her mom's probably forty two, or let's say forty five for argument's sake. She'll hate me from that if making her older, but let's say she's forty five. Okay, so the innocent man was recorded in. 83 so that's 
God, how long ago is that? It's, it's 39 years it's four, ago. Four, it's, four, it's 39 years ago. So her mom would have been five or six, let's say, for argument's sake. So fast forward 40 years, and Olivia Rodrigo is singing Uptown Girl with Billy Joel. And it, what I'm trying to get at is how this film brings back that whole time of the band as it was, the people as they were, the crowd. There are people who are first coming to see Billy Joel now that weren't born when the when the record was done, let alone when the uh, video was done, let alone when any of it. I mean, Billy's career is spanning 50 years, mm. which is, it's, it's, a, it's another milestone. Um, I'm blown away by his, his presence currently. Uh, the band is smoking. But the point I was making before is the band that the band that's on the uh, in the film is incredible. It's just the you, you, look <laughs> you can't something the genie's out already. But that it catches film, a moment in time. A million percent, Paul. The the, the film, if it, it's almost like if you weren't around to see it then, here's an opportunity to see it now. Uh, it sounds amazing. Uh, if people say, oh, I saw that like uh, in, in uh, whatever year it was released. They don't they won't get it because what they've done is they've they've put it in. Uh, is it 4D? Uh, I forget what the uh, all the terminology. Okay. It's yeah. 4K. Thank you. 4D, 4, yeah, 3D, 4D, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, 110, 120, whatever. <laughs> no, it's in, it's in 4K. It's an incredible visual it comes at you. It's like remember the uh, I don't know if you had the you probably did the um, uh, JBL commercial with the kids' hairs blown back because of the sound of the speakers. It's that intense. It it really is that special to see and hear. So, I mean, I can go on and on, um, but it's just, it reminds me how much I miss certain people who are not not that um that are not I won't say they're not in the band. So I don't I mean. There are just certain friendships that I wish I could I could hold on to. Certain people I I hold dearly in my heart and soul that I wish I could still say were um, as much of a part of my life as I wish they could be. Hmm. It must have been um, uh, incredible at the time that you joined Billy's band because he was already a superstar at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know, tell me about how nervous you were when you were. Uh, had to go. Did was it an audition? How did how, how did it come to be that you uh, became <laughs> a member of such an important member and long time member of Billy? I, the, that I became the guy. Uh, yeah. Well, I'd been touring. With, I'd been touring with Foreigner for about eighteen months prior to that. Foreigner Four. Remember that record? Yeah. Okay, I'm all over that record, singing, playing sax, and, and just about not not the solo on Urgent. I always qualify that as Junior Walker. Um, but I sang all the uh, vocals on Jukebox Hero and myself, Mutt Lang, Lou Graham. Uh, so I'd already been out doing like big stadiums. So to say I was nervous is not true because I'd been through a lot. And, and believe me, I'm not jaded and think I had it in the bag. But uh, Doug Stegbeier, may he rest in peace, was the musical director at the time. And he said, please learn. Um, only the good die young. I can't remember the second song. And then just the way you are. Excuse me. And I said, sure. And I play, I, I shed things. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to get it right. So I sat for like a week and learned the parts, played it and made sure I had it right. When the solo for just the way you are came up, uh, I just said, Billy stops, hold the best. I'm like, oh crap. Did I screw up? This? I, I thought I screwed it up. And he, he's like, just get out of here. He walks up to me and he leans up and gives me a kiss on my cheek. He said, as long as you want to be in my band, you've got a place. And he's kept his promise. And I think I've kept mine. So that's how that went down. But uh, it was, it was, it, and it's, he was a megastar, but as far, um, the fact that I had toured with Foreigner, I won't say it, it, it made it easier to get into, but those are tremendous shoes that I had to fill. Frankly, uh, I replaced Richie Kanata, who did all those tremendous solos. I always try to, I, I really give credit, like I just did for Junie Walker. The reason I had that great gig is because people perform. The solo for Just The Way You Are is one of the greatest saxophonists of all time, Bill Woods. He played that. 
whenever someone comes up to me and says, hey, great solo on Just The Way, I said, no, 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 no. That's Phil Woods. And I had the honor of doing his solo. And that's that's the most important thing is uh, that we maintain a sense of humility. I mean, we're playing big, big deal. I love with my... my uh, my UPS guy or the FedEx guy, yeah, hey, you're a rock star. I said, yeah, well, you know, my wife's got me getting a gallon of milk. So what else? There's something else I can do for you. <laughs> it's, it really is important because once you start to believe the hype, you, you're going to lose. Because if you're going to listen, if you're going to read the good, you damn well better read the bad. And, uh, you know, that's that's just how it is. Yeah. What about uh, touring with Ringo? That must have been a lot of fun, getting oh. out and actually getting to perform Beatles songs with a Beatle. Hold on a second. Can you see that? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my boy. Well, he he's... I, I've told Bill, you know, there's one point where Billy uh, and Ringo had a conflict. Uh, first, to answer your question, it's the greatest joy in my life. It actually, aside from my family, the birth of our sons and the time I spent with my family, it's the greatest joy because uh, do you remember the first uh, it won't be long, yeah, yeah, the first yeah. Beatle record that yeah. changed everything. I heard John Lennon's voice, I'm like, what is that? My Titi Iris, my godmother, bought me the Beatle, uh, the Meet the Beatles on February 9th. At the first time I heard the whole record, and that night they were on the Ed Sullivan show, and I'm like, wow, what is it? But his voice, what he sang. It won't be long yet, which I think is the right key. Uh, it blew me away. And then getting to do, getting to perform with 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 Ringo. First of all, I played with with John in seventy five or seventy. I think it was seventy five. We did one of his last performances live. And I've worked with Paul, and I've worked with Ringo. I'm still working with Ringo. It's a great. It's I'm the luckiest person you might ever interview, and I and I know that, and I don't forget it. But working with Ringo, first of all, I could say this: he loves me. He allows me to do what I do, and uh, I adore him. And I play with some of my absolute, absolute, um, uh, the greatest inspirations in my life: Jack Bruce from Cream, uh, Gary Brooker from Procol Harum. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. Um, Steve Lukather, who's one of the most amazing musicians of all time. Uh, Colin Hay, who who calls himself uh, Australian, but uh, is he Australian? He's no, Australian, he's actually yeah. he's he grew, well, he, he, he I, grew up here in Melbourne. Yeah, I know. He's but actually I thought he was born, born in, in Scotland. In Sc Scottish, what, what, Scottish, what is, Scottish. What Scottish. Scottish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, he's an Australian. He's one of my favorite favorite people in the world. First of all, he's an incredible songwriter, an amazing singer. But beyond that, he's an incredible. He's an amazing storyteller. <laughs> we will be on a plane and he'll be, oh, I'll tell you a story about that. And everybody gets like, everybody just wants to hear it. But, but my time with Ringo, you know, he calls a house, speaks to my wife. He'll speak, he's in the past when, when, the, when our sons were here, he, the phone would ring and he'd pick up the, yeah, yeah, they talk, oh, yeah. Yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, they did this. Oh, yeah. They, they, yeah, the striker should, yeah, he was again. He's my son's talking football and he goes that it's it's it's, it's ring i'm like he's talking <laughs> he's got he takes us in like family and it's uh it's it, it warms my heart that's all i could say and and the, the, what i was going to say was um there was a time when billy and ringo was night it was 2013 in fact exactly the last time i was at with ringo uh ringo had already booked a tour and you know, it was, I think in February, we were going down South Africa, South America, rather. And Billy says, oh, I got to think, uh, uh, it's going to be like whatever month it was, March, February or March, I can't remember now. And Billy said, oh, well, we got two weeks of work. I said, Billy, I've committed to Ringo. This is six months ago. And now it's like two weeks from now. I can't do that. And and Bingo, Ringo, uh, I'm sorry, Billy did this. He goes, Billy Joel, Ringo Starr, Billy Joel. Ringo story good. Okay, you got it. He he was so cool about the whole. First of all, again that that goes back to Billy's uh, persona, who Billy is. He, he loves the Beatles. He loves the music, and he said you got to go with him. And um, that was the, the that was. I mean, it was one of the greatest moments. Uh, it was <laughs> it was also one of those moments like, oh my god, how do you tell Billy Joel you can't do a tour? And 
the fact that maybe I have to tell Ringo I couldn't do it. Because that happened once before. I couldn't. I had to tell Ringo that I couldn't do it because it was a prior engagement. I expected him to say, "I'll leave your name in the waste paper basket." But at the end of the conversation, I said, "I said, Richie, I, 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 I don't know how to tell you this, but I can't do the next, the upcoming tour." He said, "Well, I understand. You know, you're a side man. You're a musician. You do what you have to do." I said, "Thank you for your understanding." And I was waiting. There was a pregnant pause, and I was expecting, "So I have a good life." And at the end of that pause was, but you'll still you'll still be my musical director, right? And it was like, oh my God. It was the greatest sigh in my life. Because to this day, he doesn't do a tour without me putting the band together. And it's it's like the the greatest blessing I've ever had because it's I'm it's I'm constantly meeting or reacquainting myself with old friends. It's uh it's it's incredible. It's incredible. What I get to do. Uh, I don't. I know. I have a lot of friends who have had great gigs and done incredible productions and this. That. I don't know anybody who's played with more of their childhood idols than I have, and uh, I say that with all the humility because it's it's all in God or Buddha's hand, who's ever it's in. It's. It, I stay out of the work of the universe and just say thank you, and it just it's been it's been amazing, and it keeps coming and coming, and so. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you had uh, Paul McCartney join you on uh, uh, some Yes, shows. he did. Yes, he did. With Ringo or with Paul? Or with, with Billy, rather. Big part. With Billy. Billy uh, with Billy, he joined us at um, at Shea Stadium, which is, we, you know, we, we opened Yankee Stadium, which is what this film is about. But the Beatles opened Shea Stadium, and we closed Shea Stadium. But the single, one of these single, no, no, the single most incredible act of humility or giving it up to your real inspirations or your real idols. Um, last song at Shea Stadium. Okay, so again, the Beatles opened it in 64. I think it was 64 they played Shea. Okay, I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't want to get... So now here we are in 2008, I believe. The second of the two shows... Paul McCartney juts in from from London, just barely makes it, waving the bass, which I call the Madonna. Uh, it's like not the it's you know it's 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 like no it, it, I call it the Mona Lisa because this thing is yeah. worth as much as that in my opinion. And um, comes on stage as a whole thing, and we do. Uh, I saw her standing there, and we, hey, it's great, great, great. And the last song of the entire evening is "Let It Be." Right? Mm. Wow. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Let It Be. <laughs> and and Paul goes, oh, yeah, there's a piano. And, and, and Billy goes, no, no, no. He gives Paul the piano. He gives Paul the last, absolute last moment at Shea Stadium. Now, that does two things to me. It says, first and foremost, that Billy is grounded so, so deeply and so well that he knows who needs to close this show okay we had all these great people and all go down the list of people but he gives paul the piano to close the whole thing and i thought that was it's it, it speaks volumes for who billy is because billy billy's like a great Team, he's a team player. He just is a team player. He knew that the, 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 the most effective way of closing this would not be for him to sit at the piano and say, uh, when I find myself, no, Paul. And you could see it of, of, in the same film. He's like, look, it's one of those moments like when Billy's looking out in the audience at, at Yankee Stadium. Here's Billy at the end, the last song at Shea Stadium, and Billy's looking at Paul McCartney saying, have at it, have at it. And I, I was, I don't think I'll ever see a moment in, in entertainment that was so humbling that he, that Billy was so humbled by the, by Paul's presence. And it, it leads it to me. It just, it just tells you who Billy is. And, uh, and look, I'll say, I don't want to sound corny, but, it re reminds me how blessed I am to be a part of his band. 
because that's uh, I'm in the greatest band. I'm the greatest bar band. I'll tell you that. But 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 I have the greatest gig of all the people I know to say, oh, this one's playing with this one. This one. Oh, great. I get to perform these amazing songs, play these these solos at Madison Square Garden, the quintessential, uh, in my opinion, look, we've played the Coliseum in Rome. I played all these different football stadiums. I played 80,000 people. I played 100,000 people with Simon and Garfunkel out in Israel. Madison Square Garden with Billy Joel is like the cherry on top of the Sunday with all the sprinkles, but that's like the that's the piece that does it all month after month. And they still come. And that reminds me, that brings me back to there are people coming to see our show now that weren't born when half of these records were done. <laughs> and when they get to see, when they get to see this, this film, they'll be reminded of, wow, that's right. St the Stormfront record came out and Stormfront is insane. Uh, Crystal and I, I could say this again, sang the hell out of it. And it was the first time I got to sing with somebody with so much soul. Crystal is is she's uh she's a she's a crazy, crazy talented. And the two of us just hit it off. And uh the film is amazing. Uh it's hard for me to say, well, it's this or it's that it's it's everything that the hype usually the hype is like, you know, well, I like I like the scissor reel more than I like the movie. The movie will blow everybody away. And it's a, uh, it just brings it just brings it all back. It's like it's thirty two years ago, and yeah. it's as fresh as it was then. And if you come out to see us, when you see us in Australia, you realize that Billy's pipes are that good. This band is that intense, and I'm the luckiest guy you'll ever speak to. I promise you that, Paul. <laughs> I'm 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 amazed Billy hasn't done a new studio album, uh, with the exception of the classical record, in uh, nearly thirty years. Will there mm -hmm. be ever another Billy Joel album? Do you think? That's above my pay grade, frankly. And uh, <laughs> but uh, I believe, you know, there's so many people who put out stuff and keep putting out records, and in a sense, competing with their catalog. Billy is very content with his body of work. I believe. Again, I, I can't speak for Billy, but I think about the body of work. And God forbid he should put out a record and it means so much to him. And there's, oh, it's not the stranger. It's not this and that. Then you have to actually deal with, you know, uh, 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 you hate to say it, but those who can't do teach and those who can't teach teach Jim, you know, that expression. And the critics, they're quick to say, oh, you know, it's just not this, it's not that. And I don't know that Billy wants to get up against that. And I don't know that he deserves to have to get up against that. It's, will there be an, look, uh, my favorite songs are, like I mentioned, where's the orchestra, but um, leave a tender moment alone, which is mm -hmm. even though I'm in love. And the bridge is the same four notes in a different, a totally different key in a different place. It's brilliant. His songwriting is brilliant. Um, this is the time which to me speaks now better than ever because this is the time we should start, start to grasp as diverse and as, as screwed up as the divided states of America are or the divided countries in the world are. We need to realize this is the time to remember. This is the time. I mean, I, I'm a grandparent. I have a five-year-old grandson. This is the greatest time in my life. And Billy affords us to have this music to play. Um, the, the, the thing that always comes to mind every time I speak to people, I mean, at the end of the night after a show, people are like, oh, can I take a picture? Yeah, sure. Of course you can take a picture. You know? And they say, you don't mind? I say, I would mind when people stop asking if they can take a picture because that <laughs> means you've fallen out of grace. But the point I'm making is what I leave most people with and... Uh, it, it, to me, it says it all right now more than ever, because you know that it's me they've been coming to see to forget about life for a while. Life is dark right now. I mean, there are things going on in the world. The last thing we need to do is put on the news. What you need to do is come out to a show 
you need to you need to be a punter and come out and see a show or go to the go to see the film because that will you will be taken out of the dark frame of mind that we're all in right now. I mean, I look, I don't watch the news personally, and I live up in I live up in, uh, in the woods, so my world to some extent is is unaffected. I shouldn't say it's not fair to say unaffected, but I don't allow it. Same way when I speak about the stage, I call the stage my emotional moat because nothing can penetrate me. When I'm on stage, that's who I am. And that's the most important thing to me is that you can't, you're not allowed to bother me with a income tax or any of that. It, it just all goes away. And right now we need it all to go away. We need it all to just, and if, if it's two hours at a, or two and a half hours at a, at a concert, or if it's, I, I can't remember if it's 90 minutes, the, uh, the, 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 the film, whatever time you could spend with this, this man's great work. And I, I look, I say it all the time. People think, oh, you're making a big, he's a, Tony Bennett calls him the walking American songbook. It's like, wow, that's, that's Tony Bennett. You know, when, when we did the uh, last play at Shade, the, the one thing that came to mind, the, the only thing that was missing was if my mother was alive to see me play with Tony Bennett, I would have been done because she was a, a, a lover of great songs and great music. And um, that's that's the one sad part about the cheat that you know both my parents. But the point being, Billy is that um, that I mean I don't know anybody, and I'll say this out loud: John had Paul, Elton has had Bernie, and I think well the only person, if I could say this, the only person I think is in Billy's league is Paul Simon. Who I adore, but as far as the tunesmith and lyricist, and as far as having a three-minute photograph that you could say, "Oh, I was going out with this girl, and uh, we oh, we did," you know, you could actually remember where you were when you hear these songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm older, so to me, when I hear the Beatles or when I hear Jimi Hendrix or when I hear uh, uh, Cream or or Procol Harum, that's my that's my era. But in the 70s and 80s, I don't know anybody who, did, who, who has more of a stamp on people's lives than Billy. And that's, that's just the, the truth of the matter. I, I'll, I'll go up against anybody and say, what about this? I'll say, hey, how about this? So mm. you could tell I love my job, right? Quick question. Uh, 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 Peter Gabriel, the So album. Tell me uh, a quick story about that. Quick story. I was playing a dive bar in, in Manhattan. There were like 12 people in the audience and there was a singer who was not the greatest singer that I ever backed in my life. And this guy walks up to me. He's just, it was his girlfriend that was a singer. And he says, hey, uh, here's my card. Um, you mind if I call you sometime? I said, sure. Fast forward like seven, eight years. And I get a call from this guy named Jimmy Phelan, who was a producer rep. He was representing Danielle Lenoir at the time. And he called me and said, hey, Mark, I'm wondering if you can come down to this power station. I'm like, oh, crap. I hope it's not for his girlfriend because she was not a great singer. It was to do so. And the point, of, the point of this whole story is when you do something, give it everything you've got because you never know who's listening. And that's how that went down. It's uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite record. One, I say some of the most fun I ever had with my clothes on. So that was <laughs> that session was amazing. And there wasn't a, everyone says, who wrote that? I said, that's the first thing I played. Peter said, play the first thing that comes into your mind, mate. And I went, ba -ba -da -da -ba -da. that was a God's honest truth. I played that and it's, I'll done the secret real quickly. It's an E flat. And if you put two songs back to back, put Sledgehammer and superstition back to back and you'll see where I came from. <laughs> wow. There's some insight. <laughs> well, thank you, Mark. Uh, go pack your bags and we'll see you in Australia uh, in a month or so. My absolute pleasure, Paul. Be safe and I can't wait to get down under. It's great to, great to talk to you. It was a pleasure. Likewise, Paul. Peace. <laughs>